Hari om. Hari om. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nothing I see means anything. <laughs> To teach is to demonstrate <laughs> the fruit of teaching is uh, learning Teaches to demonstrate. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> ah, 
just a dream. All just a dream. <sighs> this video that I'm making, making, not making, nothing's really happening, it's just an illusion. All the Maya. But I, we as I, <clears throat> find ourselves having stumbled into this place of transformation, having stumbled into this place of truth, this moment of realignment, where finally, even though our videos and our efforts, our processing, our healing, even though it falls within the parameters of the illusion, it's a different kind of illusion. It's an illusion that speaks for something that is not of the illusion, not of the world, not of this dimension. And by the power of that which is divine within us, within I, within all as I, we come together to join in a single occurrence in the opening of our minds to truth that is not of the world, truth that is not ambiguous. And in that we draw our circle wherever you are in Mexico, in the United States, in England, in New Zealand, Wherever you are in the world, draw your circle in your imagination, on the beach, anywhere, a physical circle, a mental circle, it's the same thing. The outside is the symbolic representation of the inside. Oh. tonight <laughs> I feel like the form of Jesus probably just incarnated <laughs> just making that up I don't really know but it feels that it feels something big but my thoughts do not mean anything so here and now, grounded. Ah, boy. Ah, yes. <laughs> this video I was making, or I am, <laughs> am making, regarding doing a light session to teach teachers to demonstrate what's happening in my mind, the opening that's happening in my mind is the result of many, many years, over two decades, 26 years now, of practicing a kind of meditation that was taught to my teacher's teacher, Charles Anderson, after he had his full awakening on the beach at Hiroshima. He was sent in as a military photographer to take pictures after they dropped the bomb. His heart broke so badly on that beach that he underwent the dark night of his soul immediately And uh, the Holy Spirit came upon him and guided him and he was subsequently taught by Jesus directly and my 
my teacher from him, who also had a Jesus experience, meeting Jesus several times, and uh, now me, who also had an experience of the divine nature of life, the truth of life, as singular, and also met Jesus. I shouldn't say met Jesus, I should say saw Jesus, or envisioned Jesus, or has been guided by Jesus, definitely. The, uh, the revelation, which is very, very difficult for me to talk about, the revelation, the enlightenment, the illumination of my mind, the memory of reality, the memory of eternity that to this day still burns brightly in my mind was restored to my awareness in 1997 through that experience of being beyond the body beyond the form no body, no world, no form taken if you like or lifted up by the grace of God into the spheres of eternity and restored to full awareness the nature of the creative source of life it's not a near-death experience it's not an out-of-body experience one of the recollections i would have to say recollection now but I can still see it in my mind, but one of the aspects, and I don't want to call it aspects because aspects tends to suggest separated states or separated parts, and it's not. I just don't have words to describe what I'm trying to say. But there are great rays of light that extend from God. 12, according to Jesus. Each of these rays of light symbolically is referenced as one of the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, which is a symbolic reference for a temporal association that each of which represents symbolically the whole and also part of the whole. If you were to look at through the fragmented or through the fractured glass of or the fractured prism, the reflection of these rays on earth, they are represented through 12 visible spectrums of colour each having their own harmonic, their own vibratory frequency, their own association. Seven that you can see with the body's eyes and five that you can't. And I don't want anyone out there who's had a familiarization with the idea of chakras to think that I'm going to be referencing chakras because I'm not. Spiritual awakening has nothing to do with the activation of glands it is simply a shift in the mind. But each of us, having come to this world from other realms, from other dimensions, as we have travelled down the staircase, down the ladder, Jacob's ladder, to the place where we can join in mind this dimension, to the place where we can reach the very end of the idea of what is possible and remains within each of us as the potential of the idea of separation. We've come as far as we can in our efforts as healers to be of as much use as we can possibly be.
In the idea of healing, then, what is unknown to us, but that which is occurring in us through the activity of the Holy Spirit, is our alignment with our ray association. Okay. <laughs> My ray is yellow. Yeah, my ray is yellow. The Christ ray is blue. Jesus ray is blue, I should say. I have the Christ ray yellow, Christ ray blue for Jesus. Not that that particularly matters for anything. But what we're doing when we step into our circle, when we're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to use us for the healing of the greater good, the healing of the whole, of the entirety of the Christ mind, what we're doing when we step into our circle is we're saying yes to Jesus. Jesus is the head of the atonement. <sighs> Jesus is the head of the atonement. And in a sense, we all work for him. <laughs> willingly and happily although the process of undergoing the purification to be of service in that work is not particularly very nice and that's an understatement enlightenment the process of enlightenment is a very destructive process it's been described as destructive and I, I, I would say that it feels like destruction it's really not it's, it's healing but it has such intensity in moments that you want to destroy your body, you want to destroy the vessel, but I urge you not to destroy it, but to learn and to learn how to process energy because that's all that everything is, energy. And despite that, the residue of your ego will want to give that energy a description and a meaning and uh, try to convince you of what it is. Don't listen to it. Your mind training is teaching you specifically. Don't listen to that internal monologue. Instead, keep your mind focused firmly on the light. Keep your mind focused firmly on God, on the kingdom of heaven, on truth. Even if you haven't yet experienced it, inner peace will do. Keep your mind at peace. Train your mind to be at peace. That peacefulness, that inner peace that you can and will, because this is a done deal already, um, experience happens by the grace of God, but you have to choose for it because you have free will. And as you have chosen separation, you must now choose uh, atonement. I'm not separate from what I think I see or what I experience. I'm responsible for it. So when we step into our circle, when we do a light meditation, a light healing, we're stepping into our responsibility. We're stepping into a willingness to be totally responsible for the suffering of the world as our thoughts imagine it, as our thoughts tell us it is so. Because there is nothing that we can become aware of other than that our thoughts tell us. So we are giving our whole mind, our whole heart, which is our passionate place, uh, to that idea of healing we step into the circle together and each of us is just willing to play a part in aligning with the ray association that is closest to our current harmonic and the holy spirit will true us up to that association within the framework of healing that is the most useful to the atonement 
each of us is very different and comes from different experiences prior to this realm, to this world. And all of our learnings, despite that they have no meaning now in this new endeavour, um, they have forged an association within us that has brought us to our race, our um, character, and all sorts of things that, although illusory, although imaginary, we have given meaning to, and so that meaning is used in a way of undoing, which we call healing, so that we can begin to enter into a greater association of the entirety of the 12 rays and uh, begin to release, I suppose, the defences of our false and our miscreative use of the light within us that we are. And that's very hard to talk about, very hard to describe. But it's no different than really, as a very, very quick little analogy, it's no different than taking a battery out of a toy and turning it around the other way <laughs> and reversing the current. But the process of doing that through the avatar, through the, the being or through the idea of the being, because everything is an idea, the process of doing that in mind um, takes a collaborative process. Willingness being your only part in that collaboration the Holy Spirit doing everything else for you and on your behalf and on behalf of salvation of all mankind um, through that willingness that you offer. So we step into the circle willing to play any part. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. And we breathe and we allow the energetic of our denial, however long it takes, to come up and we don't adjust through our mind training we focus we keep our mind on god is but love and therefore so am i or perhaps we keep our mind on i am or god is on a singular thought and we hold our mind there with the minimal amount of internal association internal temporal association possible like that <laughs> ah, thank you and then by the grace of God our minds begin to open we begin to have the release at first it's rough at first when you step into the circle the upwelling of emotional energy the upwelling of what is resistible. It's like there's going to be moments where you want to run and where you want to get out of the circle, where you want to get as far away from yourself and whatever you think's going on as possible. But you'll come back and you'll try again. You'll draw your circle and you'll stand there like Jesus in the desert, 40 days and 40 nights. And you'll just let it happen. Usually I stand up in my circle. I'll draw a circle. If Sometimes if I go to the beach, I haven't done it for a long time now, but my mind just opens of its own volition now. But when I was learning to, or teaching myself to open my mind at will, uh, <laughs> like that. <laughs> it was very rough going at first. And I've seen people run out of the room, literally run out of the room. My own wife, at the eve of her enlightenment, couldn't get far enough away from me, from our house as possible, in as much hurry as she could. 
and there was nothing I could have said to her to make her stay and to undergo what she was, what was coming up for her because she had not yet completed sufficient amount of mind training to recognise for herself what was actually happening for her and her habituation as my habituation as everybody's habituation is to adjust. Right? We are always adjusting to the light, always in the process of denying our truth, even in the moment of our enlightenment. The only moment, the only one moment ever in all time and space in the Alpha and the Omega where you don't deny the light is in the moment you realise it in self-realisation. Everything else, even standing on the precipice, even standing on the very precipice of entering the void, which is the idea of transcending the conscious level, even then, it's an act in denial. <clears throat> but, like I said at the start of this video, it's a... All denial is illusion, but it's a it's a reverse illusion. It's a reverse denial, but it's still in denial. It's still like Narnia. You're still in Narnia. You're not home. <laughs> I know some people think Narnia is cool. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't a great analogy. But... The opening of your mind brings with it information, living information, living useful information, not just random information in the light, in light. You'll have, when your mind opens, you'll have an experience, a direct experience of actual light, as if somebody's shining an incredibly bright torch, <laughs> brighter than you can buy in any shop. <laughs> through a keyhole. That's how it sort of feels to me anyway. It's like a like a flash of light through a keyhole. But sometimes it's a, a vast expanse of light across a threshold, like a horizon line. Sometimes it's a circle of light, like a like an aura, and it just vroom, it comes forth with a whoosh, like a vroom. And... Uh, Those moments through meditation where you still your mind to that point and you wait, you draw your circle and you wait however long it takes. Here I am, Lord. And, and right up until you think you can't wait anymore or you can't stand it anymore or you're asking for healing, right? healing of the mind that believes in separation, right up until that point and then stay a little bit longer. Okay, stay until you feel like you've got to run out of the room and then stay a bit longer. It's always in that last moment, the 11th hour, that's when the miracle happens. It always seems to be just right there on the cusp, right at the very edge of your willingness, at the very limit of your consciousness, at the very end of your tether. Be still and know that I am God. We are that. I am that. We as I am that. <laughs> My thoughts do not mean anything. Nothing I see means anything. Be still.
thoughts do not mean anything. Be still. Breathe. <laughs> yes. Draw your circle, step into it. All of you who are watching this, you've been called. All of you who are watching this video. It's impossible that you're watching it by accident. Impossible, there is only the will of God. If you choose to ignore it, it'll have to come around again for you. You've been called to serve at the altar of truth give up the world, forget about the world. The world cannot tell you what you are. Breathe. Feel. Feel the power within you. It's the power of love. The power of unconditional love. Allow yourself to want that because to want what you have already isn't really a want, it's simply an accepting. Allow yourself to feel it, to accept it, and to want to have that reflected in all your relationships on earth, unconditional love through forgiveness. I step into my circle in the willingness to forgive myself for the world I think I see, the world I think I made, the idea that it represents as separation. The Maya, the illusion, the dream. I give it to you, Lord, now. Including myself and all my false ideas of myself. I would remember the truth. And be still and wait. <coughs> <laughs> ah, boy. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Tears of heaven. Love you. I've had a few people say to me that they want to come and sit with me and learn, and I'm generally not interested in having followers as such. I'm not interested in those ideas but I'm aware that whatever you need to do you will do but my purpose is always to make myself redundant to you I'm not interested in having people hanging around I've had many students over the years that have come to live with me and each one will take on board as much as they can and Sometimes they run away and then come back again. <laughs> this is a journey into fear. You need to tell yourself that often. You need to drum it in. Drum it into your mind. This is a journey into fear. This is what I'm doing on behalf of humanity. I'm undertaking this journey to make it easier for those that come after me. And of course for my own, uh, my own atonement. I've had people ask me questions that, and I don't want to sound rude ever, but sometimes it's better I don't answer the questions because they will only lead to more questions. If you're asking me questions, if you're wanting to ask questions, watch all of my videos first. 
read the Course in Miracles first, complete the workbook first, and then if you still have a question at the end of all that, I'll answer it for you. Ah, <laughs> hurry on. Teach is to demonstrate this is healing. Uh, you ready? Breathe. Uh, let it in. Feel it. The light and the love of God. Feel within your heart and mind. Feel something in there. Don't define it. Just feel it. Don't give it a name. Just feel it. Breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Father, for my brothers. As we walk home together. Thank you. Thank you. Keep an attitude of gratitude. If you don't have gratitude in your heart for absolutely everyone, for everything, you have healing to do. Even for the worst of occurrences in the world, those things that you put on that sliding scale of better and worse, even for the worst of those things, find gratitude. Each of those things is giving you the opportunity for forgiveness. Each of those things is helping you. Seen rightly, there is nothing that is not helpful and cannot be used, no matter how horrific it is. Forgive the form, the appearance, and feel what it is in you, that energy, and give that to the Holy Spirit. Give that to the divine in you and allow it to be transformed and healed and made brand new so that you can begin to see things differently. Whew. Amen. <laughs>